Today we're going to do topic 4.2 in Math 30-1. It's called the unit circle. The unit circle is a circle with a radius of 1 centered at the origin 0, 0. Here's what it looks like. We have four points shown so far on this circle. The point x is 1, y is 0. x is 0, y is 1. x is negative 1, y is 0. And at the bottom, when x is 0, y will be negative 1. Now if we look at any point on the circle, here we have a right angle triangle. We'll say the distance along the x-axis is x, the distance along the y-axis is y, and we're going to use that to create a triangle, and the point is going to be x and y. Now we notice that the radius is equal to 1, we've already established that. Now we can figure out that all points on the unit circle can be described as x as the ordered pair xy and using Pythagorean theorem x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 squared or x squared plus y squared equals 1 is going to be the equation of our unit circle. In example 1 we're asked to determine the equation of the circle centered at the origin with a radius of 2 this time. Well what we're going to do is we're going to say x squared plus y squared, is that right angle triangle there, has to equal 2 squared. So that means our equation is going to be x squared plus y squared equals 4. Relating arc length and angle measure in radians. The formula A equals our angle times R, where A is the arc length, our angle is the central angle in radians, and R is the radius applies to any circle as long as A and R are measured in the same units. We learned that last unit, last topic. In the unit circle the formula becomes A equals our angle times 1 or A is our angle. This means that the central angle and its subtended arc on the unit circle have the same numerical value. You can use the function P of our angle equals XY to link the arc length of a central angle in the unit circle to the coordinates x, y of the point of intersection of the terminal arm and the unit circle. And then if you join P of your angle to the origin, you create an angle in the standard position. Now, angle radians is the central angle and the arc length is theta units. Here we have what we're talking about. Function P takes real number values from the central angle of the arc length on the unit circle and matches them with specific points. For example, if our angle is equal to pi, the point is negative 1, 0. Thus you can write P of pi is equal to negative 1, 0. Let's determine the coordinates for points of the unit circle. Determine the coordinates for all points in the unit circle that satisfy the conditions given. Draw a diagram in each case. A, the x coordinate, is 2 thirds. Here we go. First of all, we know x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. If x is 2 thirds, we're going to say 2 thirds squared plus y squared is equal to 1 which means that y squared is going to be equal to 1 minus 2 thirds squared, which is 4 ninths, or y squared is equal to 5 ninths. Now we'll take the square root of both sides, and y is going to equal the positive or the negative square root of root 5 over 3, because root 9 is 3, and we can say that there's going to be two points, 2 thirds, and negative root 5 over 3, and 2 thirds positive 5 root 5 over 3. Because 2 thirds root 5 over 3 is going to be on the first quadrant, and 2 thirds negative root 5 over 3 is going to be in our fourth quadrant. 
for b. This time, we know that the y-coordinate is negative, root, negative 1 over root 2, and that the point is in quadrant 3. What's the value of x? Well, again, we're going to plug that into our unit circle. x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. x squared plus negative 1 over root 2 squared is equal to 1. Negative 1 over root 2 squared is 1 over 2. So that means x squared will equal 1 minus a half or a half. Now we can say that x is going to be the positive or the negative 1 over root 2. That, we're told now, is going to be in the third quadrant, means that it can't be positive. x is going to have to be the negative 1 over root 2. So that means our point is going to be negative 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2. However, this is not a proper way to express an answer because the root 2 on the bottom has to be getting rid of. So what we're going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by root 2, and that's going to give us root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. Here we have example 3, the multiples of pi over 3 on the unit circle. On a diagram of the unit circle, show that the integral multiples of pi over 3 in the interval from the, our angle is going to go from 0 all the way to 2 pi. What are the coordinates for each point, p of our angle, in part a, and identify any patterns you see in the coordinates of these points. Here we have pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. Now, there's 0 pi over 3, which is two, same as 2 pi, or 6 pi over 3. For part B, where we're going to start with our 60 degree triangle. Those gives us sides of 1, 2, and root 3. However, in our unit uh, circle, our radius is not 2, but 1. So we're going to divide all of those sides by 2. So in our unit circle, we're going to have a radius of 1. You're going to have a 60 degree at the bottom, at, at the central angle. And it's going to be 1 over root 2. 1 over 2 is going to be the x-coordinate. Root 3 over 2 is going to be the y-coordinate. So there it is, our point 1 half root 3 over 2 for the angle pi over 3, 60 degrees. Now, over on quadrant 2, pi over 2. 2 pi over 3 is going to give us the value of negative 1 half root 3 over 2. In quadrant 3, it's going to be negative 1 half and negative root 3 over 2. And in quadrant 4, it's going to be negative root 3 over positive 2. And x coordinate is, of course, 1 half. Your assignment for day one is to do your turn on page 185 first, and then do page 186, numbers 1 to 6. And in day two, I want you to do page 187, numbers 7 to 16.